Welcome to the Rock and Recovery Talk Show. Everybody, thanks for watching Rock and Recovery. I'm Carol Michelle. I'm here with Daphne Willis. Hey guys, <laughs> thank you for coming on our show. Absolutely, thanks for having me. And you are an amazing musician, and you have a heck of a story too. You're a person in recovery. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I've been in recovery for three and a half years. Uh, I was uh, basically self-medicating with cocaine and alcohol for about ten years. Um, trauma. I was sexually assaulted when I was in college and uh, basically self-medicated and numbed it out for about 10 years and um, and then yeah through uh, a bunch of different circumstances mainly just people that I loved being so concerned for my health and my well-being and it was ruining every part of my life you know financial work interpersonal health um, decided to get clean and sober and um, so basically through that process um yeah I, it's been incredible to just let my music kind of go more in, in that lane mm -hmm. and um i've always been a songwriter i've always been in music and i've always performed but the last three years have really been um different you know they've been more honest uh they've been i don't know just more fun and more uh I'm just more connected to everything now. It's right. been really amazing. It, it's pretty bold to like have so much recovery focused music. You know? it, sure, yeah. I think uh, it is. And I, I'm lucky though because, so I'm signed at Sony ATV as a songwriter, Wonderful. which means uh, that I get to write all kinds of songs. So I write songs for other artists, I write songs for film and TV and like commercials. And um, that to me is like, you know, to have my, so my songs be commercially successful in that way and then my artist kind of brand is focused on things that I'm really passionate about, which is health and wellness, recovery, mental health. It's been really great. Um, you live and breathe your work, you know, like it's stuff that I live and breathe every day and stuff that really affects me on a daily basis. So I can't just be an artist putting out things that I'm not connecting with, you know, because then when I get on the stage, it's not going to... You can smell in ingenuity, like you can smell when someone is genuine and when they're not. And I just can't, I could never be an artist who, I don't, not that there are, but I mean, I could never be an artist that wasn't really just putting themselves out there. So. Uh, I would be amiss if I didn't mention the song, Somebody, Someone, sure. that has touched so many of us as a family member seeing that. Um, that video and hearing the words to that song it just really touched my heart. Can you tell us a little bit about the song? Yeah, so I wrote the song with another songwriter named Jen Bostick, mm -hmm. and I lived in Nashville at the time, but um, my brother has gone through, you know, just some really rough patches with his own story, mm -hmm. and uh, he's been homeless and in and out of jail and hospitals, and we've all been really, really worried about him. Mm -hmm. Um, at times, you know, he would go missing, and um, it just changes when you're when you've gone through those things. It just changes the way you see the world and the way you view people who are homeless on the street, and the way you, I mean, the way you interact with the world just changes. And um, we, yeah, so we wrote it for our brothers, but it's also like we just needed that hope in the song. You know, we were like really writing it from a place of need for hope. And um, when it went out, you know, it was a kind of a vulnerable moment and it could have gone several different ways and it ended up, you know, doing really well and going viral and people were using it in 
in support groups and sharing it and <clears throat> so it's just been really incredible to to see it you know do a bunch of stuff in the world as a songwriter I mean remove like me mm -hmm. like even if she had sung it performed it and put it out mm -hmm. I would have been so like honored to be a part of that you know yeah it's a beautiful thank song. you it, and it's I mean it moves people thank and you and it to me it opened up the door to say people are more than just the disease right. people are more than just the end of the road person right. that you see there's a person there that is funny or beautiful or smart or whatever they're loved right and your your song just captures it so perfectly thank you yeah so thank I, you. you you speak for a lot of family members you know who have a loved one that's suffering from addiction right thank you yeah and that was the whole point was to give people a voice because yeah. you know a lot of us in that situation don't have a voice or an anthem or anything media related to like see and to relate to because it's just not out there yeah. so it's just trying to you know I'm just trying to put more more and more content out there and stuff like this is amazing like to just sit and talk about it for people who are either on the edge of maybe going into recovery people who have family members people who are in recovery like we all need to see that we all need that representation of ourselves mm -hmm. Do you think that the families need some type of recovery as well as the person? Well, they're, they're like Al-Anon is amazing. So mm -hmm. Al-Anon, I go to Al-Anon meetings. That's been amazing, um, which is really helpful. And there are support groups, but I mean, I think the the emphasis of the person in recovery also needs, like the, the family members also need to be emphasized because it takes a community to help somebody recover. And you have to have a strong community and the community has to be well. You can't recover in a community or in a family that is really, really dysfunctional and unhealthy. Like it makes it absolutely, you know, nearly impossible to do it. You can do it, but it makes it really challenging. I'm gonna let you go because I know you got a show. No, and, and well, I, thank I you. I so appreciate your time. Absolutely. And I look forward to you coming to thank Rochester. You. We have a huge recovery community out thank there. Thank you, I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm hoping to be out there um, in 2020, yes. either January or September. So I'll see y'all then. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, what's up? I'm Daphne Willis, and I'm here with Carly Holtzeiser, who's one of the founding members of Youth Voices Matter. And we're in upstate New York in Albany right now for the New York Recovery Conference, where I was brought to speak and perform and hang out with some cool people, like Carly. Ooh, Carly, like tell me. Yeah, like you, <laughs> like you. Tell me a little bit about um, how you got involved with, well, you, you founded it, so. What sure. what sparked uh, your desire to found uh, Youth Voices Matter? So, you know, the state put out some deliverables set forth by the grant that we needed to follow, and mm -hmm. a lot of it was throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what stuck. Sure. But it uh, and it what was is cool. sticking? What do you find is working really well? What is the specific task uh, for you in, in what you're doing with the organization, and what do you see working? So what's working is meeting young people where they're at. I think that's the biggest, you know, when, when people ask me, one of, the, one of the biggest questions I get asked is, how do you, how do you reach the youth? And that, that's usually by older adults. Um, and and this, the trick is simple. It's going where they go, being where they're mm -hmm. at, and meeting people at a level that, meeting people where they're at. I can't say it any other way. And, and that's true for anybody in recovery, but specifically youth. Mm -hmm. feel like I felt at 18, you know, recovery's for old people, mm -hmm. I am too young for this, this is what society expects of me to party and use and it's cool and um, especially with with trauma and adverse childhood experiences and all the mental health that goes along with addiction. Right. You know, it's, it's that coping skill that I found at least at a young age that I thought, oh, I found the solution to this. And it wasn't the solution, obviously. Right. So. Right. And you guys are doing a lot of events statewide. Yes. So Sweet. what kinds of events are you guys putting together? So we actually, there's three of us that cover the entire state of New York. <laughs> Need I say more? So <laughs> one of the things that, because we do a lot of advocacy, so one of the things that we advocate for is more of us. Yeah. And more people employed, um, more money for that. and. 
one of the things that we do is, within my regions of the state that I cover, we've hosted everything from ice skating events. Um, we've had open mics, potluck dinners, hiking, just everything. And I think, you know, it's cool to reach out to young people that might be in a facility, an inpatient facility, adolescents, and take them out of that facility for a little bit. Show them that recovery can be fun and link them up with people who can help them when they get out. Mm -hmm. And that's what's missing is, is you know, we look at uh, prevention, uh, treatment, and recovery as three different silos sometimes. And we need to work together and incorporate all of them because you can't have one without the other two. Yep. So that's I don't know if that answers the question, but no, we're it doing does. It a lot. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a lot. Like you said, there's yeah. a lot of moving parts. It's not a one-stop solution to the problem because, as you guys have outlined so wonderfully as part of this event, recovery is different for everybody, yeah. and you have to find what works for you and absolutely. reach people where they're at. I absolutely agree, and it's hard too because of current pop culture and the climate there and. You know, people in recovery aren't seeing themselves in the media and in movies and in, and when they do, it's negative and hopeless mm -hmm. and like a bummer and like a big drag, so nobody mm -hmm. wants to talk about it. Um, we talk a lot about stigma. I mm -hmm. think that's like a huge buzzword right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a huge stigma around, not only the word stigma, but the word addiction. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and the word recovery for young mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I found that, you know, recovery was this taboo thing. Like when oh. we're in recovery, it's like there's a negative connotation, sure. at least for me when I was younger, that it was going to be the end of fun. Right. It was going to be a life sentence. Right. And, and there was no, right. there was nothing left to do. Right. You know, like all my using days, my party days, and all the good times were right. over. And you know, when they say change people, places, and things, yes. that's a common phrase, right. right? When you're young, you're like, that's what I know. That's mm -hmm. all I know. And, and especially when I was in high school, like, how do you change high school? I, I can't do that. I can't change the people in my classes. And uh, I don't really know what things mean sometimes, but it's, it's hard. It's yeah. really, really hard. And we yeah. want to make it as easy as possible for the next young person. Yeah. Yeah, which is absolutely the best way forward. And, you know, for me, you know, a lot of what I try and do is focus on the future, and the youth is there in the future. So yeah. focusing on all of that is just a really, uh, it's, it's very impactful. And it's going to not only change that generation, but change all the, for the generations after them. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it's amazing what you guys are doing, and, and uh, we were talking about a music festival, maybe, that's going to be going on this <laughs> year. I said, you know, they have, they have Bonnaroo and mm -hmm. Soberoo. Mm -hmm. What if we did a statewide New York State recovery music festival? They were like, we love it. Yeah. And I'm like, great. And then it kind of floated away, and it, it, I came up with the idea again. It, like, it kind of re resurfaced, and... I was like, wait, this needs to happen. Yeah. You know, this really needs to happen. And so I'm talking to the city of Rochester, and we have a, a date that we're all going to meet together and really come, like, finalize sure. the date. But we have a tentative date. Amazing, yeah. September of next year and in recovery month. Yeah. So we're, we're hoping to get a really good turnout. Hey, ready for me? Yeah, we're, we're just going to, we'll just roll through if, if you want to hang. <laughs> sure. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check, check, check. Do I have time to go to the restroom? Sure. I'll be right back. Yeah. Tell me your full name. Lori Cheney. All right, so before you do it, don't start off and be like you did the other one. Like, right. Hi, this is Daphne. Because right. we're going to be continuing. Right. This will just be, yeah. Right. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Hey, what's up? We're here with Laura Tini, and Laura Tini is also with Youth Voices Matter. What do you do there? So I'm a youth recovery program specialist. I have a bunch of different roles, but one of the main focuses is working with youth and young adults and communities to start groups and spread education and awareness about recovery and host fun events and do fun things to show recovery is fun. Sweet. Yeah. What kind of stuff, like, 
Um, so uh, the group I started in Columbia County, New York, um, we hosted a bowling night, they hosted a barbecue, they co-hosted a barbecue with actually another recovery community organization, which was really cool to do a co collaboration with them. Sure. Um, but they're working on something for Christmas now, um, just to show that, you know, other young adults um, and youth that, you know, you can have fun in recovery. Right, and that they're all out there. And yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the thing that you see, like, working the best? Um, I think just the fact that they're the ones that are, you know, the drive of the group, like they're, they're, they're the group and they have the, um, you know, the will and the, like, I don't have any say. I kind of just like on the sidelines and like, here I am and I'm here to help you with funding and like, you know, support you through what you want to do, but you ultimately know what the need is in your community. You, you tell me what's needed for you and you do what you want to do, which is really cool. So it's a proactive kind of like really them being more hands-on and yeah which is so true yeah. which is so true yeah. um being proactive in your own recovery or just like like i was saying the act of just trying things right. or just the act of doing things mm -hmm. is like mm -hmm. so impactful for sure definitely in the beginning for sure yeah definitely definitely cool well thank you yeah. it was just a little short is there anything else you want us to include like specifically about your program or the conference or anything else that you want us to include? Mm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank so, you. Uh, You're welcome. All right, so yeah, unhook yourself on the mic. Hey, everyone. Hi. Hey. Hi. I know what you're thinking. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh my gosh, is that Daphne Willis? Woo! <laughs> Um, we have a wonderful singer-songwriter for you. Um, Youth Voices Matter really, really advocated to get her here. Um, we wanted her, <laughs> and she definitely delivered. Um, if you heard her earlier speaking in the big workshop, um, you know a little bit of her story, you know a little bit about her and who she is, and her songwriting, and we get to hear her perform, do an acoustic set just for us. So give it up for Daphne Willis. <laughs> Taste the other side is loosening my pride. Is there a test? I try my best, but my hands are getting sore. Whoa, whoa, yeah, this road I'm going down. Whoa, whoa, the feet don't fail me now. Whoa, cause I'm done with being done, done with feeling sick, sick of feeling tired. But I got this box of tools Hey, it's what you choose And how you use The seven ways of food Whoa, whoa Now nah, I'm gonna let this slip away Whoa, whoa I'll make it my someday Whoa, cause I'm done with being done Done with feeling sick Sick of feeling tired Tired of all of this Sure. Um, what else would you like to like cover? Is there anything specific that you kind of want to? Yeah, you know what? I like to say um, you had kind of mentioned it in your messaging earlier about you can be in recovery from anything. So even though substance use and abuse is the prevalent number one public public health issue um, across America, um, I'm not gonna say that young people don't identify, but. You know, 13, 14, 15, they still trying to figure things out. Sure. So we like to, for me, when I'm working with young people, I really just like to open their mind and shift their perception around recovery. There's already a huge stigma with recovery. So that's why sometimes young people don't always identify. They're like recovery. Sometimes they don't even recognize that they have an addiction right. issue or problem. So what we like to do is just try to like, for me, 
um, open young people's minds about recovery. One way we do that is like you can be in recovery from anything, or or do you have a family? A lot of people, young people, relate to a family member or a peer being in recovery, and right. then they start to start thinking about themselves in a right. different light. So, or trauma as well. Yes, you know, trauma. Yes. A lot of times, like when when you're a kid, you don't realize what you don't even really know what a traumatic event could right. even mean mean for you or could even be and yeah. And a lot of times young people, especially depending on, well, a lot of young people just push it to the side because it's like a part of life. And that's why when we grow older, we're figuring, we're self-medicating because we're trying to cope with the trauma. Right. You know, so that's yeah. why I like to, you know. That's why it's different for everybody too. And that's right. why there needs to be like all the options need to be laid out because people also feel, I know a lot of people who are like, well, it's just basically AA, right? That's like the right the thing, and it's like right. no, there's like so right. many other ways to recover. That's another thing we do. We celebrate we celebrate multiple pathways to recovery because I like to say, similar to life, you know, your recovery path is your own journey. Right. And sometimes your journey is going to take you off course, but sometimes you need to take those detours to see this another way. Somebody, someone